Hey everybody, Homeslice Hunter here, and in today's video we're taking a look at some fun battles from the Great League Remix Cup featuring a very spicy moveset choice that keeps catching opponents off guard. These battles were submitted to the channel by a member of the community, KitKat Deluxe, so many thanks for the battle submission. Now, KitKat's team is Tropius, Whizcash, and Swampert. But the Whizcash on the safe switch has a nasty surprise. It is running Blizzard, and a Shadow Blizzard inflicts massive damage on anything that it lands on. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches, and let's watch Blizzard make some Pokemon disappear. Starting off with a terrible lead, Tropius and a Carving safe switch into the Whizcash, and out comes Chestnut. This is a tough spot to be in, but the Chestnut doesn't throw. They think they fully wall the moveset. They're looking for the farm down, and they get one shot by a Blizzard. And just like that, the opponent, they had such a good lead, and they throw it all away by disrespecting the nuke from Whizcash. Mud Bomb is going to land. Whizcash gets another Mud Bomb as well. This Shadow Whizcash putting the team on its back in this game, number one, as it one-shots the Chestnut and nearly gets rid of the entire Carbink as well. In comes Swampert. Swampert is going to no-shield the Moonblast, and the back is going to be Amoongus. Amoongus, of course, did get a pretty nice buff with the changes to Astonish at the start of the season. Amoongus is going to go for the foul play. But this endgame is not a winning one for the opponent. Had they preserved switch advantage, they would have been in a dominating position. But instead, they got greedy with the chestnut. They tried to farm down, and now they are paying the price as switch was lost. They lost basically their entire carbink as well. And now, Amoongus just cannot do what it needs to do here. In comes Carbink, answered with the Swampert. Opponent sees the writing on the wall and concedes the match. We move to the next match and Tropius is in trouble as now it's staring down Bastiodon. Shadow Whizcast save switch answered with a Shadow Dragonite. Shadow Dragonite has the pacing advantage and is going to strike first with the Dragon Claw. Shadow on Shadow, this does a lot of damage. Whizcast deep into the red, but gets the Blizzard on one HP. The Whizcast survives the damage, lands the Blizzard, and flips the switch advantage just like that. Let's go Whizcast. Whizcash, an absolute star in these first two battles. In comes Swampert. Swampert has such a pacing advantage over this Bastiodon, unleashing the Hydro Cannon, and the final Pokemon is Driftblim. And this will be tricky. Driftblim is able to honestly do a pretty good job at core breaking this Air Slash Tropius plus Swampert core. As these Icy Winds are going to be hitting for double super effective damage, that's going to pressure the Tropius into giving up a shield. Tropius farming up, going for the Aerial Ace right before the next Icy Wind is reached. Aerial Ace, it's debuff, it's not going to do a lot of damage. And there the opponent makes a pretty massive mistake. Maybe they were expecting Brutal Swing from the Tropius as it is a move that it learns. But a debuffed Aerial Ace is of course going to do way less than a Hydro Cannon from Swampert. So they end up using their shields inefficiently and now they're going to lose. They get a debuff, Icy Wind gets a permanent debuff onto the Swampert, but a debuffed Hydro Cannon is going to do way more damage than a debuffed Aerial Ace. Hydro Cannon is just a way better move. So Hydro Cannon knocks Driftblim out of the sky and secures the win. Moving to the next match, can Tropius ever win a lead? No, it cannot. Tropius into Shadow Magneton. Shadow Whizcash enters the field of play and is met with another Dragonite. We saw what happened last time. The Whizcash was able to get the Blizzard. It was on a very low amount of HP though. Whizcash, it gets there. We've seen it land twice. Can it land a third time? That's three for three. Down goes Dragonite. In comes Magneton, taking so much damage from these mud shots. And in comes Swampert. Swampert, honestly, can take whatever is thrown here. Discharge, not going to be too much of a problem. Getting a full mud shot farm down in the back is a Sand Attack Staraptor. So some very cool spice from the opponent as these Sand Attacks are actually adding up. But... The biggest issue for the opponent is they're going to have no fast food pressure against Tropius. Sand Attack is going to be triple resisted. And Kid Cat's just going to let this go, saying this is absolutely fine. I'm saving shields for the Tropius. Triple resisted Sand Attacks. I swear they are healing the Tropius. <laughs> Tropius, with two shields to hide behind, will be able to take this game very, very comfortably. As Fly wouldn't even knock out, but now you can just spam out these Aerial Aces. Staraptor, it's known for damage, it's not known for bulk, and Aerial Ace will be game over. 
Hopping into the next match, Tropy is allergic to winning leads as it goes into an Alolan Ninetales. Actually, a Charm Alolan Ninetales. Whiskash save switch, going to be met with a Whiskash, and now we have the Battle of the Fish. The opponent, I believe they have the extra, extra small Whiskash, if I'm not mistaken there. They're going to be firing off a Scald. Scald does not get the debuff, and Kit Kat is going to continue the onslaught of Mud Bombs, just looking to apply as much pressure as possible to the opponent. Now, Kit Kat will have to be very mindful because the opponent may also be running Blizzard, gonna bring in the Tropius opponent, and he's gonna pit it out into the Charm Alola Ninetales, and the fact that it's Charm, this is actually fine for the Tropius. Tropius goes for the Leaf Blade, that does some pretty nice damage. Of course, you will have to protect yourself against the double super effective Weather Balls, but if it's Charm, honestly not a terrible spot to be in. These Air Slashes are adding up, Tropius gets a full farm down, that's massive. It exits with energy, in the back is a Shadow Tentacruel, Tentacruel now gonna be stuck against the Swampert. Swampert, Scald will do so much damage if it lands. We will see the shield. Scald does not get the debuff. Opponent sends in the Whiskash, and Whiskash will immediately be met with an onslaught of energy. Hydro Cannon number one, immediately followed by Hydro Cannon number two. Whiskash doesn't even get to throw energy here. It's just getting KO'd. Back in comes the Shadow Tentacruel. Just gonna go for the Hydro Cannon because there's energy banked on the Tropius. Hydro Cannon gets it low. There's the combo play. Opponent had all kinds of Tropius counters on the lead and in back and Tropius just does not care as it's able to secure that win. Tricky lead for Tropius in the next match as it leads into Shadow Driftblim. I mean, the team already beat a Shadow Driftblim last time, but of course, that was when Swampert already had a Hydro Cannon head start. On the lead, things are much less clear. The Tropius overfarmed to try and avoid the CMP tie, and the opponent overfarmed as well, so it does still end up being a CMP tie. Tropius is going to go for the Aerial Ace. It looks like the opponent waited a turn there to see if Tropius would catch, but Tropius did not, and instead just gets to land the Aerial Ace. This will be an incredibly aggressive farm down. Let's see if it is attempted. In comes the Shadow Whiskash. Whiskash going to be met with an Icy Wind from the Drift Limb. I mean, this is still going to do a lot of damage. And now the Mud Shots. Oh, we might actually see a farm down here. Opponent going to switch out into Machamp. But were they too slow on the switch? Is a second Hydro Cannon going to be able to be reached? Swampert going to be hit with a cross drop. This will do quite a lot of damage. We're going to see the nose shield from the Swampert. Swampert gets to the Hydro Cannon. That is a massive survive. And this Hydro Cannon will secure the knockout. Down goes Machamp. And in the back is Tentacruel. And the opponent is in trouble. Because this Whiskash kept so much energy. Mud Bomb connects. Another Mud Bomb and Root shortly. Whiskash looking to double up. A potential win con for the opponent could be an astonished snipe. They try for it, but the Whiskash says no. Mud Bomb knocking out the Drift Blim. All that's left is the Tentacruel and Shadow Whiskash. Didn't get to Blizzard this time, but still clutch as ever, securing the win and taking that game. We move to the next match Tropius versus Obama Snow. My goodness, this Tropius, I mean, at this point, has got to qualify for hazard pay with these bad leads. Opponent throws on six. They throw on alignment there. They throw the weather ball, so they overfarm to throw on incorrect timing, and that does give Tropius a free air slash of energy and damage. We see a switch now into Swampert. Swampert going to try and make it to a Hydro Cannon. Swampert just going to let this go. Opponent baits with a weather ball, and they're just firing off another weather ball. Swampert going to no shield. Swampert can potentially make an earthquake into whatever gets brought in, but the opponent knows they can just stay in with the Obama Snow. Hydro Cannon into the Obama Snow gets shielded. Since the Obama Snow shielded that, maybe there is a chance, but my goodness, this Obama Snow, you really would have to hope that they're double weak to Whiskash to have any chance. Well, there is step one. There is a Nido Queen going to be met with the Whiskash. Whiskash Shadow Mud Bomb is going to inflict massive damage, but not enough. The Nido Queen is going to make an Earth Power, and that's going to do quite a lot of damage to the Whiskash. Whiskash able to get the farm done. There's just so little health remaining. In comes the Obama Snow. Whiskash looking to overfarm. Can a resisted Shadow Mud Bomb pick up the knockout? Obama Snow gets KO'd. In the back, they have Swampert. Wait. This might be a win. This looks so doomed. In comes the Tropius. It gets the Leaf Blade. And this game, I don't know how this ended up in a win. Leading Obama Snow into this team should be unlosable. But Kit Kat was able to find a way and secure the win. 
Tropius sees arguably its best lead it's seen so far, now leading into Cresselia. Considering you have two Mud Boys in the back, Cresselia, usually on Grass Knot, you're very happy to not see this in the back and catch it on the lead. Tropius going to fire off the Leaf Blade, and this is a battle between two very bulky Pokemon. Cresselia is running Fugicide, and that Fugicide makes its presence felt, dealing significant damage to the Tropius. Tropius Leaf Blade is going to land. Cresselia continues the overfarm. This Fugicide will not be enough to knock out, but it will do quite a lot of damage. If there is something that could potentially threaten the Mud Boys in the back, Tropius getting this low would be an issue. Tropius is able to pick up the knockout. It's Skeleturge. In comes Whiskash. Oh no! It's going to be a Venusaur. Whiskash farming up a ton of energy. Tried to get to the Blizzard, but Venusaur is going to go for the Frenzy Plant. Whiskash now changing tactics. Instead, just going for the Mud Bomb. Mud Bomb into the Venusaur. Does get shielded. Going for another Mud Bomb. Thought about the Blizzard, but with the opponent throwing energy... The match has now changed. Venusaur is able to get the farm down. In comes Tropius. These air slashes adding up, but it gets farmed down. In comes the Swampert. Swampert forced the shield. And now things are feeling very tough. In comes the Skeledurge. Skeledurge is going to unleash a Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball will do quite a lot of damage. Swampert is going to be able to withstand this attack, but not by much. Throwing two and the Hydro Cannon. I believe it's all going to come down to... Is that Venusaur in one Mudshot range? If it is, the game's a tie. If it's not, then it's a loss. In comes the Venusaur. It's one Mudshot range, and the game will end in a tie. Hopping to the next match, Tropius into Ariados. Tropius catching a good lead. At this point, Tropius might not have even realized that was possible with all the terrible leads this team has seen. Oh my goodness. Lunge is going to land. Tropius returning fire with the Aerial Ace. Poison Sting is hitting for super effective and the Lunge debuffs add up over time. But as you see, there is a clear advantage in this matchup for the Tropius. Honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing a switch out here and a farm down with the Whiskash. And there it is. That's a beautiful play. Opponent going to respond with Swampert. And if Swampert is their best response to Whiskash safe swap, then hopefully, then Kit Kat's own Swampert will be able to put in a nice amount of work. The opponent, they're farming up so much energy here. They're letting another Mud Bomb be reached. They're finally going to start throwing energy. And Whiskash, more than happy to let these moves through. Opponent goes for the Hydro. Hydro not going to KO. Whiskash gets the Mud Bomb, but good counting from the opponent, denying that energy with a perfectly timed Hydro Cannon. Hydro Cannon picks up the knockout. In comes the Swampert in the back. Opponent, oh no, they have a Lolan Marowak. And a Lolan Marowak could not get a line onto the Grass type. So this opponent is in serious trouble. Swamper over farming well over the back-to-back -back Hydro Cannons. Hydro Cannon into the Marowak is going to be shielded. And there's another Hydro Cannon ready to go as well. Marowak gets KO'd. Didn't even really do a dent. In comes the Swampert. An attempt at a catch, but the opponent is just going to concede the match. Hopping into the final match, Tropius into Steelix. Not a great lead. In comes the Whiskash, and out comes a Gudra. Do we get to see a blizzard one more time? Kit Kat is going for it here. Gudra getting hit with the blizzard, but no, they shield at the last second. Absolute heartbreak in this final match as someone finally respects that move. In comes the Tropius. The hope is that with Gudra out of the way, Swampert will be able to sweep this endgame. Gudra going to go for the Thunder Punch. That does nothing to the Tropius. Oh, but the opponent actually saves the Gudra and they switch back into the Steelix. Steelix hit with the Leaf Blade. In comes Swampert. Swampert farming up energy as Steelix will immediately look to apply a debuff with a Psychic Fangs. Psychic Fangs with that debuff. The damage just adds up so much more from these Dragon Tails. Hydro Cannon into the Steelix. Steelix is going to no shield, but they can bring back in the Gudra. Gudra, I believe, can survive a Hydro Cannon here, but not by much and we'll be able to get Mudshot down after. I see a shield from the Gudra. I do like the shield from the Swampert. Save the Swampert in case you need it. There's a quick switch into the Tropius. Tropius makes it. Oh no, it's Karbank in the back. Tropius makes it to the Aerial Ace. It's caught onto the Karbank. And I don't know if this game is going to be a win. This is going to be tough. Swampert's going to have to do a lot here. Making the Leaf Blade is valuable. Wait, I actually think this can be a win. 
because the Swampert is going to get a ton of energy and Carving's pacing is so slow. Getting to that Leaf Blade was massive, shielding up the Power Gem, and now Swampert just needs to farm so much energy. Getting the back-to-back -back Hydros, it's caught onto the Gudra. This has to be enough to KO. It does! This was the only opponent who actually respected a Blizzard, and unfortunately, even that wasn't enough to get them the win, as the energy management on Swampert Endgame was absolutely phenomenal. All in all, these are some extremely entertaining battles, so big thanks to Kit Kat for sending them in. Shadow Whiskash may not have the Skull debuffs that it once had, but my goodness, those Blizzards, those poor, poor Dragonites did not know what hit them. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The Spur Guys fight is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.